Toyota's Prius remains the most recognizable hybrid vehicle on our roads and took a big step forward in this fourth generation, guys. This Mark IV model introduced a sleeker, more striking shape made possible by a stiffer, more sophisticated platform that helps to substantially improve the handling. The hybrid powertrain is clever too, hence a set of efficiency returns that continue to establish this car's superiority over comparably priced diesel rivals. But the electrified vehicle marketplace is these days very different, and the Prius must continue to adapt. So in mid-2019, this XW50 series design was enhanced with a general wash and brush up and the novel option of all-wheel drive. That's the car we're going to look at here. Welcome to the car that in its first two decades of life reshaped the global automotive landscape, bringing hybrid technology into the mainstream market while focusing the motor industry's attention on the way its products could be cleaner and more efficient. Toyota's Prius did all that and in this rejuvenated Mark IV model guys aims to continue to set those standards, building upon quite a heritage of ingenuity. Here we're going to look at the lightly revised version of this fourth generation model, an update introduced in mid-2019. But first, a bit of Prius history is needed for us to be able to put the importance of this model into some sort of context for you. To understand that, we need to turn the clock back to 1994, and a year in which the Toyota Motor Corporation made a decision aimed at fundamentally changing the way the world would drive. Engines, until that point exclusively fuel-based, could, the company decided, be developed in future to run with a combination of fuel and battery power. This so-called hybrid solution would double efficiency, slash harmful emissions, and create a whole new class of car. So was born the Prius, the world's very first mass-produced hybrid-powered vehicle, a model true to the Latin roots of its name in being very much ahead of its time. So familiar are we with hybrids today that it's easy to forget how groundbreaking this technology was two decades ago. It certainly took Toyota a while to get it right. Early prototypes catching fire, uh, failing to start or merely silently expiring after just a few miles of use. But chief engineer Takashi Yukiyamada and his G21 development team persevered and by early 1997 the very first XW10 series Prius model was ready for launch. A dumpy, rather awkward looking saloon that suited the Japanese market but rather puzzled everyone else. It was refined into XW11 series form for overseas markets and global sales began in 2000. Toyota lost money on everyone sold, but they weren't put off. The world would have a hybrid. It was simply a matter of time and public perception, which began to change when movie stars like Leonardo DiCaprio, Cameron Diaz and Harrison Ford all became Prius people. Drive this car and it was clear to all that you cared about your world and its future. A statement that, as it turned out, a lot of people wanted to make. So many, in fact, that suddenly what had begun as something GM's vice chairman described as an interesting curiosity became a must-have eco-fashion accessory, especially when a larger, more stylish second-generation XW20 series hatchback version was introduced in 2003 with significant gains in power and efficiency. You look smart, you should drive a Prius, the advertising told us, and very soon millions were doing just that. The model's mass market success sealed with the launch of a third generation XW30 series version in 2009 that used a more efficient hybrid system and switched from 1.5 to Pokia 1.8 litre petrol power, yet was still cleaner and more frugal. It formed the basis for an MPV version launched in 2012, the Prius Plus. By now, Toyota was ready to roll out hybrid technology across all its mainstream products and share it with its Lexus luxury brand. As a result, by the end of 2015, the corporation had sold over 8 million hybrids, 3.5 million of them Prius models. 
A success story then, to a point. For all its notoriety, the Prius remained a niche market choice in its first three generations of life. A great option if you wanted to demonstrate your concern for the polar ice cap, but too compromised in handling and practicality to interest most mainstream family hatch folk. The suspension lurched through the corners. The CVT auto you had to have was thrashy and the batteries took up boot space. What kind of car would this Toyota be if these things were sorted and the Prius brought up to date with a younger, more dynamic image, we wondered. Could it be made efficient enough to outclass a fresh generation of eco-minded diesel rivals? And would Toyota match its environmental credentials with an equally impressive showing in the fields of safety and connectivity? At its launch in the early spring of 2016, the fourth generation XW50 series Prius answered many of these questions, but it found itself operating in a very different market to its predecessors. Since then, virtually every manufacturer has introduced some kind of engine electrification. It's no longer any sort of novelty. And of course, the other thing that's happened since then is that this car has had to deal with its first really direct competitor, Hyundai's Ioniq Hybrid, which has a more sophisticated automatic gearbox and can slightly undercut this Prius on price. When that Ioniq model was updated in the summer of 2019, Toyota decided it was time to fight back, introducing the lightly updated version of the Mark IV model that we're going to look at here. It's slightly smarter to look at, and the cabin's been carefully upgraded. But the main change lies with the option for the first time in this kind of car of all-wheel drive for the few that will want it. Otherwise, things are much as before, and there's still the option of a pricier plug-in version at the top of the range. Here, though, we're concentrating on the standard self-charging hybrid model that most will want. In a very different market, does the Prius still have populist appeal? Let's find out. At this Mark IV model Prius's original launch back in 2016, Toyota claimed that this car would feel rewarding to drive, which initially sounded a little difficult to believe. After all, prior to this XW50 series Prius model's introduction, that sort of thing simply hadn't been in this car's DNA. With this Mark IV version though, the young design team wanted this hybrid not only to look sportier, but also to feel more engaging at the wheel. In a previous Prius, you felt like you were using some kind of very effective domestic appliance. The original launch of this fourth generation model though, bought fundamental chassis, suspension and steering changes, meaning that much more than that could be promised. This revised version of the Mark IV model doesn't feature any further engineering enhancements, but Toyota has embellished this self-charging hybrid model's appeal by adding in the option of all-wheel drive, which is what we'll be trying here. We'll get to all that, but to start with, the whole experience is very much as it's always been in a Prius and will retain a futuristic feel for the customers new to the hybrid concept that Toyota is trying to attract. Push the round start button and flick the stubby little blue CVT gearbox lever into D. Hybrids are nearly always automatic and there's silence. Your first reaction is to push the button again, but no, this is how it is and how it will be for much more of your journey this time round. We'll get to that in a minute. For the time being, there's the rather pleasant sensation of eco-conscious refinement as you waft away from rest. It doesn't last very long once on the move. Toyota's full hybrid system always tries to revert to all electric mode, but from start off, it isn't very long before the engine cuts in, even if you've a feather light -like right foot. In theory, you can mandate all electric motoring by pressing this EV button on the dash, but that only works for just over a mile, and it won't function at all if the engine's cold or if for some reason the batteries aren't charged up. Plus, staying battery powered requires such a relaxed pace under 31 miles an hour 
that you'll quickly find other irritated road users queuing up behind you. At least the spoiler bisecting the rear window means you won't be able to see them very well. Now, if all those drawbacks bother you and you'd like to be able to travel further and faster with silent milk float all electric mobility, then you'll be target market for the pricier Prius plug-in model your dealer can tell you about. As before, the hybrid Synergy drive system operates in two ways once your all-electric range is spent. Give it full throttle and you'll only be using the engine. But if you're going to drive like that most of the time, then there's really not much point in buying this kind of car in the first place. Ease back, trying to stay in the central blue band of the provided HV system indicators eco driving gauge, and you'll be operating in the hybrid setup's comfort zone, where engine and battery power cut in and out with seamless synchronicity. As part of this, during deceleration and under braking, the engine switches off and both electric motors act as high output generators, recovering kinetic energy that automatically recharges the batteries for the next time the hybrid system is able to switch back to electric only mode. You can increase the effectiveness of the regeneration process by flicking the gear lever from D into this B setting. Mastering this kind of thing is important because unless this car's Panasonic battery cells are regularly replenished with energy, the main electric motor isn't going to be actively intervening very often to relieve the engine. Fortunately, that process was refined quite a lot with this fourth generation design, backing up Toyota's claim that a much greater proportion of your driving can be all electrically powered with this Mark IV model than was the case with its predecessors, up to 50% of it in fact, if you're traveling in urban conditions. Now, thanks to hybrid system changes, a more effective battery and a clever heat recovery setup that uses spent exhaust gas to speed up the warming of the engine coolant, the Japanese maker reckons a Mark IV Prius driver will find the electric motor cutting in to save fuel around 60% more frequently than it did in the previous pre-2016 era Mark III Prius model. It's been difficult, to be honest, for us to accurately verify that, but subjectively there does appear to be less engine interference than we remember on second and third generation versions of this Toyota, which in turn has made this Prius an even quieter, more refined mode of transport than it already was. In other words, this car works as a clean, frugal automotive tool, certainly better in this Mark IV form than it ever did before, but what about the introduction of that element of driving enjoyment that I alluded to at the beginning? Prior to the launch of this fourth generation design, the Prius wouldn't have been able to offer that uh, without stiffer suspension settings that would have alienated its typically comfort oriented customers. But the installation of this Mark IV model's new TNGA Toyota new global architecture platform changed all of that. That made the structure of this car a massive 60% stiffer than before, while also positioning it closer to the tarmac, lowering the center of gravity. Those two things really ought to reduce body roll and encourage more precise and responsive handling. And as soon as you point the car at a few corners, it's clear that they do. In older Prius designs, you wouldn't have been able to enjoy these improvements very much because of the lifeless steering and suspension that turning under power would have had the car jumping about all over the place on anything other than a billiard table smooth surface. Now, realizing this, the development team completed a thorough redesign of both elements. Hence, the surprisingly accurate feel and feedback of this Mark IV model's electric steering system and the redesigned double wishbone rear suspension layout that's far better than the previous damping setup at soaking up impacts from our country's terrible tarmac. Don't misunderstand us, this fourth generation Prius hasn't been turned into any kind of sporting family car. It never should be. What we're saying is that you could now switch to one and with modest expectations still enjoy your driving. And that's a big change from what was on offer to Prius buyers prior to 2016. 
The way you're now positioned at the smaller rimmed wheel certainly helps in this regard. The placement lower than it once was in this model, the angle more engaging. The power delivery dynamics have changed a little too. Previously, the most frustrating thing about driving a Prius was the thrashiness of its belt-driven CVT automatic gearbox. Uh, you press the throttle, the revs roared painfully, and, well, not much happened. It was the car's way of admonishing such an environmentally unfriendly driving style. This fourth generation version still doesn't much like driving in that way. In fact, a vast array of electronic readouts are on hand to actively discourage it. But if you really must push on, then the car is these days a little more willing to oblige. That's thanks to a CVT setup, which is a touch more responsive and doesn't ask the engine to rev as much as before. Ah oh yes, the engine. We were coming to that. On paper, it's the same 1.8 litre VVTi Atkinson cycle unit this model line has had since 2009. In practice though, it's very different in this Mark IV design, not least because in pursuit of efficiency, it develops slightly less power and torque than it did in the old Mark III model, hence a total hybrid system output that's fallen from 134 brake horsepower in the pre-2016 version of this car to 122 brake horsepower here. Toyota says that weight savings and tweaks to the hybrid system compensate for that. And sure enough, the basic performance stats rest to 62 miles an hour in 10.6 seconds and a maximum speed of 112 miles an hour are very little different to what they were in an old Mark III Prius. In fact, the powertrain's even flexible enough this time round to make Toyota confident enough to allow Prius owners to tow. Uh, previous versions of this model can never be fitted with a trailer hitch. Uh, that's provided the trailer in question doesn't exceed 725 kilograms in weight. Flexible it might be, but as with most hybrids, this powertrain doesn't actually feel anything like as fast as those performance stats suggest. The figures I've given you infer that a Prius will match the performance of a comparably priced rival 1.5 or 1.6 litre diesel, but of course that doesn't take into account the fact that a typical black pump fuel competitor will have nearly twice as much torque to propel you through the gears. All of this means you'll only be able to keep up with such cars by driving in a very un-Prius-like fashion and making use of the most dynamic of the three provided driving modes that you access via this dashboard button. Switch out of either the grey tinged normal or blue tinged eco settings and select power and red mist descends onto the graphics. It doesn't pay at this point to get too excited but you will experience sharper throttle response and an adjustment in engine braking performance to make the car feel a little more alert. Toyota has the option to do something about this by offering buyers of this car the alternative version of this hybrid engine that it makes available in the Corolla and the CHR, the two litre 184 brake horsepower unit. Uh, but that hasn't appeared yet for Prius buyers. So if you like the technology here, but need a little more performance from it, something like a two litre hybrid Corolla might be a better bet. Let's finish with a few words about the all wheel drive system that I referenced at the beginning. It's difficult to imagine why a typical Prius buyer might want this unless he or she happened to live in an outlying country area. But Toyota had to develop this E4 all wheel drive I that stands for all-wheel drive intelligent setup to pair with this hybrid unit in its RAV4 SUV. So it thought it might as well offer it here. All-wheel drive I equips the Prius with an extra electric motor on the rear axle powered by the hybrid battery. The four-wheel drive system automatically engages to provide additional drive to the rear wheels when pulling away on slippery surfaces at speeds of up to six miles an hour. At higher speeds, between 6 and 44 miles an hour, it can, if necessary, also come into play, transferring torque to the rear axle when sensors detect a loss of grip. Again, operation is automatic and on demand, and you can monitor it via a selectable dash top display. Most of the time, though, this setup will be redundant because it doesn't operate in normal driving conditions or under braking. Still, at least it doesn't add a load of extra weight to the drivetrain. That's because, unlike mechanical all-wheel drive systems, the E4 design needs no drive shaft between the front and rear axles and has no centre differential. 
In our view though, a Prius doesn't really need the embellishment of all wheel drive or plug-in technology or an MPV body. The standard front-driven self-charging model is, in our view anyway, still the one you'd ideally want. Though its character hasn't fundamentally changed, these days it's a little smarter, a little more alert, a little more user-friendly and a little more efficient. A little more Prius? If that's your perspective, we'd find it hard to disagree. The appearance of a Prius must not only be instantly recognisable, but also aggressively futuristic. That is, after all, the whole point of it. Were you to want this technology packaged more conventionally, you would be looking at one of Toyota's more ordinary models, maybe a Yaris, a Corolla or a RAV4. Here, in contrast, is the poster child of the eco-revolution, complete with its familiar styling cues, the trademark arching roofline, the slab sides, and the double rear screen. Yet somehow, with this Mark IV design, the Prius visual formula has been reinterpreted. The concept behind this car reinvented for the modern era by a team of young Japanese designers who set out to make it look more powerful, engaging, and sporty. The overall effect is certainly striking, even if it isn't necessarily very beautiful, with a slanted waistline and a jagged front end that certainly makes much more of a statement than older Prius designs ever did. And it's at the front where we'll start, where the low bonnet line is emphasised by a brand emblem badge that sits no higher up than it would do on the company's sleek GT86 sports car. The frontal design has evolved a little with this facelifted version of the Mark IV model, primarily through the adoption of these slimmer headlamp units, which, as before, feature bi-LED beams for high and low beam operation, LED clearance lights and LED daytime running lights. If you know this car, you might also notice the reprofiled front bumper and the way that the front fog lights are now round socket type lamps located in this revised lower grille rather than fitments located in these angular corner bumper cutouts. Plus the bottom edge below the lower grille has now been given a floating effect intended to further express this car's low center of gravity. And in profile, well, the silhouette has been slightly altered by the way that the peak point of the bonnet has now been raised to generate a more coherent flowing line down the sides of the car. That further emphasizes what the brand hopes is a youthful, dynamic look, which was made possible in this fourth generation design by the adoption of a completely new TNGA, Toyota New Global Architecture Platform which enabled 20 millimeters to be shaved from the total height. Now, there's plenty else to emphasize that point too, notably this subtle central belt line. Further back, this becomes more pronounced and lies beneath a further sharp upper crease that fans out from the rear door into the tail lamps. The flanks have plenty of shape too, thanks to this gently rising lower front door crease, and below that, the light catching surface of this rocker panel that flows along the sills before racing upwards towards the rear wheel arch. At the rear, the aesthetics are even more extrovert with that low roof distinctively integrated into the rear pillars using blacked out panels shaped to draw air around the side windows to the back of the car. Here, the split rear screen creates a natural rear spoiler that flows into striking boomerang shaped LED tail lights that light up very distinctively at night and feature aero stabilizing fins. These lamps have been subtly revised as part of the facelift changes with new design light guides and an inverted trapezoidal shape that now flows into the tailgate just above the registration plate. These lower corner reflectors are also new. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, notably the way that the sophisticated TNGA platform creates a body that's not only impressively light, but also very rigid. It's a massive 60% stiffer than the pre-2016 Mark III Prius. Even the wheels were made less weighty and more rigid for this Mark IV model 
with buyers offered either 15 inch rims or these larger 17 inch wheels featuring smart resin ornamentation. Time to move inside and investigate a cabin that committed Prius people will find satisfyingly futuristic yet familiar. Nothing's really changed with the revised version of this fourth generation model, apart from a few minor trim enhancements, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. As usual in a Prius, there are no conventional dials to view through the three-spoke steering wheel. Instead, the instrument cluster retains its position top and center on the dash, in this case made up of a couple of 4.2-inch TFT color screens. The main display closest to you incorporates a digital speed readout, has a built-in subscreen with battery charge info, a hybrid system indicator, and an MPG meter. Plus, it also shows the driving mode that you've selected, color-coded blue for eco, gray for normal, and red for power. To the left of this primary drive screen, a further multi-information display gives you information about the hybrid system and eco driving guidance, along with multimedia info, climate control settings, a compass and driving assistance alerts. Anything this can't tell you will probably be dealt with by the Toyota Touch 2 media screen that sits a little further down on the center stack, this seven inch monitor just below the neatly branded air vents. Now, this display still feels a little low res and its graphics rather behind the times compared to rivals. And disappointingly, at the time of this test, you still couldn't have it fitted with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, smartphone mirroring. But Toyota has made the Touch 2 system's responses a little quicker and added a more powerful amplifier for better sound reproduction from the DAB audio system together with Clarify technology to maximize audio quality from compressed music files. Bluetooth phone functions, uh, various hybrid energy informational readouts, and a useful rear view camera are all included as part of this display. And if you add navigation to this setup, you also get onboard connectivity via Toyota Online. This gives you access to features like Google Street View, uh, Google Local Search, the TomTom Tom traffic service, IP traffic, the Panoramio photo sharing service, and an apps function. Buyers wanting to go further can specify this system in upgraded plus guise, where it builds in Wi-Fi connectivity, voice command recognition, and a text-to-speech message readout function. Plus, the screen will display SMS texts, emails, and calendars via compatible smartphones. Enough with the various screens. What about the design? Well, the lower bonnet and the deeper windscreen mean that forward visibility is okay. Unfortunately though, the split rear screen still compromises your view out back. So the standard rear view camera is a welcome feature, though you'll have to do without parking sensors unless you choose a really plush model. Otherwise, as usual with the Prius, it all feels very different with the layered dashboard as ever prioritizing distinct control and display zones. For this revised model, the center console has been given a cleaner, more consistent look with smarter piano black treatment, which extends to the gear shift surround and matching inserts in the steering wheel. Now, as usual with piano black finishing, it all looks nice in the showroom, but in day-to-day -day use will quickly attract smudges and hairs. Uh, we're more comfortable with the seats, and you will be too. They've been very effectively designed for great all-round support and an engaging driving position. And for this revised model, get smarter embossed fabric upholstery. The curious stubby blue auto gear lever falls neatly to hand. It's light frictionless action rather at odds with the effort required to operate the ratcheting foot pumped parking brake. Stuff we like includes the head up display now upgraded to include turn by turn guidance graphics and this neat QI phone charger now larger so that it can take phones up to around 160 millimeters by 87 millimeters in size. Uh, both features are standard on plusher models, the latter one to be found here at the base of this center stack. Detail improvements include nicer switch gear for the windows and the powered mirrors, plus the relocation 
of the switches for the heated front seats to the centre console. We continued to be impressed by the air conditioning system with its clever S-Flow functionality that tailors interior climate control to suit the number of people in the car. Clicking this dash button delivers a neat driver priority option. Not so good are the small door bins, though in compensation there's a deep side opening storage box between the seats behind a twin cup holder area that includes USB 12 volt and aux in points. There's also a reasonably sized glove box and overhead space for your sunglasses. Time to move rearwards and take a seat in the back, a process that, unless you're really quite short, will involve the need to duck below the sloping roof line. Having done that, you might not be too surprised to find that once inside, headroom is at something of a premium for taller folk, though it's slightly helped by these recessed ceiling areas. Normally, these seats would have been positioned a little lower to compensate for the swept back ceiling, but that's not possible here since they sit right on top of the hybrid system's bulky battery pack. Otherwise, though, there isn't really very much to grouse about. Legroom here is generous, and thanks to the low center transmission tunnel, it's easier to seat three folk than it normally would be uh, in this size of car. Useful practicalities include provision of a 12 volt socket, and as well as the usual seat back pockets, you get on the left hand side this neat zippered pouch too. There are coat hooks in the overhead grab handles, small bottle holders in the doors, and you get a couple of cup holders in this fold down center armrest. Finally, let's take a look out back. With the first three generations of Prius models, the batteries took up cargo room, not today. They've been specifically designed here to be more compact, and this, along with this Mark IV version's well-packaged rear suspension and particularly compact hybrid system, means that boot capacity is surprisingly spacious for an electrified family hatch, rated at 502 litres, 343 litres of it below the window line. For reference, the pre-2016 Mark III Prius had 56 litres less than that, so packaging progress has clearly been made. And this figure certainly looks better than the 443 litre capacity of a rival Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. There are a few spatial caveats to bear in mind though. On base spec models with the smaller 15 inch wheel rims, Toyota supplies the space saver spare wheel that you don't get with variants that feature the largest 17 inch wheels. With the spare in place under here, you'd have 457 litres, still way more than you get in a Golf, a Focus or an Astra, or at least you would in a front driven Prius. In this all wheel drive variant, the E4 drivetrain cuts boot space by 45 litres, though you do still get a flat floor for ease of use. Given all the effort that Toyota has gone to in order to try and ensure that the hybrid system doesn't impinge on luggage space, it seems churlish to complain at the shallowness of the loading bay, or the fact that it doesn't include a 12 volt socket or a ski hatch for longer items. You do get these neat fold out bag hooks though, one on each cargo sidewall, and each apparently tested with typical Toyota thoroughness to ensure that they won't buckle beneath the weight of the bulkiest takeaway. Inevitably, given the hybrid powertrain, there's no room for much under the floor, certainly not for any kind of spare wheel on 17 inch wheeled models, though you do get these two narrow compartments. Uh, to accommodate larger items, you push forward this 60-40 split folding backrest, at which point up to 1,054 litres of space is revealed up to the height of the load cover, or 1,633 litres if you stack your stuff up to the roof. Prius pricing starts from just under £25,000 and ranges up to around £29,000. That's for this self-charging hybrid model. Toyota also offers a visually almost identical Prius plug-in variant, 
based on top trim levels, which demands a premium of just under £5,000 over this standard model, all of which means a starting price for the plug-in of just over £32,000. Now, if you're happy to stick with self-charging hybrid technology and have a growing family, you might also be interested to know that much of this standard car's engineering can be found in a seven-seat Prius Plus MPV model priced from around £28,000. But our focus here is on the conventional self-charging hatch version, which is offered in a choice of four trim levels. Active, Business Edition, Business Edition Plus, which is what we have here, and Top Excel. Opt for a Business Edition Plus variant, and you'll be offered the option of spending £1,650 more to get the all-wheel drive variant that we've chosen to try today. Now, before we get into talking about competitors from other brands for this car, it's probably as well to point out the reality that many of its closest rivals come from within the Toyota family. The brand offers a hybrid version of its conventional Corolla family hatch, which costs much the same. While Lexus still uses an older version of this car's 1.8 litre hybrid power plant in its CT200H entry hatch model, which will cost you only slightly more. This current Prius's 1.8 litre hybrid engine is also used by Toyota's CHR small crossover, which again will cost you only slightly more, but is significantly smaller inside. In terms of other brands, we're not going to bother talking about similarly sized hatches with mild hybrid engines as rivals say versions of the Ford Focus or the Volkswagen Golf, for example, because uh, mild hybrid tech isn't the same sort of thing at all as full hybrid self-charging technology, and it's nothing like as efficient. Nor will we reference all the similarly sized diesel models that you could get for Prius models, because if you were happy to fuel from the smoky black pump, you probably wouldn't be looking at this Toyota in the first place. In terms of the kind of car this Prius is, it only has one really direct competitor, a model specifically designed to sell head-on against it, Hyundai's Ioniq. The Hyundai has a slightly more powerful engine, 139 brake horsepower against the Toyota's 122 brake horsepower unit, plus a smoother DCT auto gearbox and a list price that undercuts that of a Prius by around 500 pounds but it has a slightly smaller boot, is fractionally less efficient, and offers a lot less in terms of eco-technology to help you drive more economically. Are there other conventional self-charging hybrid options you could consider? Well, there's Kia's Nero Hybrid, which uses the Ionix powertrain and is pitched at around the same kind of £25,000 price starting point as this Prius, but that's a compact crossover model aimed at a slightly different audience. The kind of crowd more likely to be considering another self-charging hybrid small SUV, the Hyundai Kona Hybrid, which also uses Ionic tech and can undercut a Prius by around £1,200, but is significantly smaller inside. Closer to this Prius's size is the Subaru XV e-boxer hybrid SUV, but one of those costs from around £29,000. That kind of top-end Prius budget would also buy you a Ford Mondeo self-charging hybrid, but that car's far less efficient than a Prius. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a Prius that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Toyota has been with the standard spec this time round. Well, Let's see. Even on entry-level active variants, you get 15-inch five double-spoke alloy wheels, dusk-sensing LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, LED rear lamp clusters, um, power folding mirrors, an alarm, a smart entry system, and a proper temporary spare wheel rather than one of those silly tire mobility kits. Now inside, as well as that standard auto gearbox, every model gets the Toyota Touch 2 infotainment setup with its center dash screen and a six speaker DAB audio system. Plus there's also dual zone automatic air conditioning, uh, clever enough to sense which seats are occupied and adjust its flow accordingly. In addition, all variants get a rear view camera which is just as well, given the way that the two-piece rear window cuts across your line of vision when reversing. Uh, plus, there's Bluetooth phone connectivity, 
uh, electric lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat, all-round electric windows, and adaptive cruise control. Uh, one of a whole range of electronic safety features that I'll cover in more detail in a minute. Most Prius buyers will probably be tempted into finding the small extra premium necessary to trade up into one of the mid-range business edition variants. That gets you a color head-up display, rain-sensing wipers, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, heated front seats, leather steering wheel trim, and a useful wireless phone charger. And with Business Edition Plus derivatives, Toyota would also add in larger 17-inch alloy wheels, though the larger rim size means that you lose that useful spare wheel. Other Business Edition Plus features include a smart, intelligent park assist system with front and rear parking sensors, and there's the Toyota Touch 2 with Go satellite navigation and media connectivity setup. As for the plushest Excel trim level, well here you get leather seats, a JBL 10 speaker premium audio setup, and an upgraded Toyota Touch 2 with Go Plus infotainment system that allows you to create in your Prius a Wi-Fi hotspot. On to options, there aren't too many. Uh, you can add rear parking sensors in with active trim and all round parking sensors in with business edition spec. You can also add the Toyota Touch 2 with Go navigation system into lower grade models, or indeed the Toyota Touch 2 with Go Plus set up with in-car Wi-Fi. If you buy in below top XL trim, leather upholstery is an option. And if you go for a plush version like this one with 17 inch wheels that'll slightly harm your running costs, you can downsize back to the 15 inches at no extra cost. Beyond that, you'll probably want to think about the various extra cost metallic or pearlescent paint choices. The only standard color is solid pure white. Beyond that, all your options are metallic or pearlescent paint choices. Uh, we've got metallic blue crush here. The pricier pearlescent white pearl and scarlet flare finishes are created using a three-stage process that adds luster allowing light to pass through a translucent layer and reflect off incorporated flakes of aluminium. What else? Um, well, we'd want to consider the protection pack, which adds door scuff plates, floor mats, and a boot liner. And if you care about your car's aesthetics, the side sill trims in a piano black or bright chrome finish might be of interest. Plus, you can specify wind deflectors and door handle protection film. For the inside, you can add in adjustable tablet holders that can be clipped onto the back of the front seat head restraints to keep the kids quiet on longer trips. Uh, roof bars are of course available and with these fitted you'll be able to add in a roof box or holders for skis, snowboards or cycles, all available via your dealer. Finally, there's a range of tow bar options. Uh, this generation model is the first to be able to tow a trailer. Safety wise, all models are very well provided for with the Toyota Safety Sense package included as standard. With this, you get a whole series of advanced electronic safety features that could hardly have been imagined by earlier Prius drivers. Perhaps the most significant of these is the pre-collision system with pedestrian detection autonomous braking system. Uh, it's one of those that scans the road ahead as you drive, the system searching for potential collision hazards with particular emphasis on pedestrians. Now, if such a hazard is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Helpfully, you can adjust the pre-collision system's level of sensitivity. Other included safety sense electronic features run to RSA road sign assist, uh, there to pitch your road signs as you pass and display them on the dash. Uh, you get an automatic high beam setup that dips your headlights for you at night. There's a lane departure alert with steering control sway warning feature that warns dozy drivers uh, who might be veering out of their lane on the highway and helps to correct the steering. And there's an adaptive cruise control system that keeps you a safe distance from the car ahead and automatically regulates your cruising speed, slowing you down or speeding you up with the traffic flow. 
Avoid entry level trim and you also get two further features. A blind spot monitor warns you on the move if you're about to dangerously pull out to change lane or overtake. And a rear cross traffic alert system warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a parking space. More conventional safety features include Isofix child seat mountings, uh, anti-whiplash head restraints, and seven airbags, including a driver's knee bag. To try and make sure that you never have to use them, there's VSC, vehicle stability control, and an ABS braking system with brake assist for emergency stops. Plus TRC traction control and hill start assist control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Prior to the launch of the fourth generation version of this Toyota, industry commentators were beginning to question this Prius's place in the whole scheme of modern day motoring. Yes, the Mark III variant had moved things on a long way, improving on the original design's cleanliness and frugality by nearly 25%. Even so though, as the 21st century moved into its second decade, its returns were looking less and less ultimately impressive. By now, after all, there were lots of more affordable, frugal diesel family hatches that could at least equal this Toyota CO2 reading, with many of them able to better its fuel uh, showing by as much as 15%. Plus, buyers with more money to spend were being shown that plug-in hybrids and extended range electric vehicles could go beyond that and offer a completely new level of efficiency without resorting to the limitations of full electric mobility. As a result, rival brands were increasingly ignoring the conventional hybrid technology the Prius had pioneered. Was there still a place for it? We'll answer that question the way Toyota has with this Mark IV Prius. By giving you two WLTP rated stats, up to 68.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 94 grams per kilometre of CO2, those being the headline figures of this current version on 15 inch wheels. If you then reference the fact that the original first generation model delivered only 55.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 on the older, less stringent NEDC cycle, you'll have an accurate understanding of exactly how far this Japanese corporation's understanding of hybrid technology has progressed in just two decades. Bear in mind also that Toyota can offer plug-in hybrid technology too. In fact, arguably the brand did much to invent it. If you add that into this car, then more new WLTP benchmarks are set. A difficult to believe combined cycle figure of 217.29 miles to the gallon and a CO2 return of 29 grams per kilometer. That's courtesy of a larger 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery pack that uses more advanced lithium ion cells and can be charged in only two hours and 20 minutes to provide an all electric driving range of up to 39 miles. Here though, our focus is on the conventional hybrid version, which certainly sets fresh standards when matched against direct diesel rivals, which have fallen way behind it in the efficiency stakes. Just how far behind? Well, think of the most frugal family hatch you can buy, say, for instance, a base diesel Volkswagen Golf 2 litre TDI 115 PS. That car can match this Prius's combined cycle fuel showing, but its 108 grams per kilometre CO2 reading is way off and will mean that you'll pay significantly more tax. And that deficit would increase further if you conducted a proper like for like comparison and got yourself the Golf in a form that would give you the automatic gearbox that comes included in the Prius package. So how has Toyota managed such a significant step forward this time round? We certainly didn't expect it given that at first glance you might think the hybrid synergy drive system used here to be little different from the one that powered the old pre-2016 Mark III Prius model, incorporating as it does much the same 1.8 litre VVTi Atkinson cycle petrol engine. If that's your perspective, then take a second look, for the reality is that much has changed. The electric motors are smaller for a start, and the Panasonic battery has also been reduced in size. Though 10% more compact, it can absorb 28% more energy in the same amount of time. As a result, it's faster charging and therefore can cut in to relieve the petrol power plant more often. 
That's a process also aided by a clever heat recovery system that uses spent exhaust gas to speed up the warming of engine coolant. These two changes make a big difference. So big, in fact, that Toyota reckons a Mark IV Prius driver will find the electric motor cutting in to save fuel around 60% more frequently than it did in the previous Mark III model. When the engine is in use, it functions quite a lot more frugally than it did in the pre-2016 Prius design, thanks to a complete redesign that's seen great improvements in combustion efficiency, along with innovative ways of managing heat and reducing friction. It also breathes better, thanks to a redesigned intake system and the addition of a large volume exhaust gas recirculation setup. Toyota measures the results of all this development in terms of thermal efficiency, the extent to which an engine converts the energy available in its fuel into usable energy to power the vehicle. Judged in this way, the Prius power plant attains a 40% thermal efficiency rating, which is still a world best figure for a petrol unit. The efficiency enhancements don't stop there either. This Mark IV model Prius is 20 kilograms lighter and far more slippery than its pre-2016 Mark III predecessor, with a 0.24 CD drag coefficient, aided by the way that the stiffer TNGA platform channels air more smoothly beneath the car. There's also an electric shutter behind the large lower front grille that opens and closes in line with the cooling requirements of the engine. That not only aids aerodynamics, but also helps the vehicle more quickly reach operating temperature. Further gains have been made in improving the rolling resistance performance of the tyres and in the development of an intelligent S-flow air conditioning system that senses who is in the car and then minimises airflow around any empty seats. Screen options even display an eco score so you can see how efficient the climate system is being. It's all very clever. To get the full benefit of the engineering that's gone into this Toyota though, you've got to do your part as a driver. And that means proactive use of the various modes and systems provided. Previous Prius people will be familiar with the fact that this car uses a full hybrid system, one that allows the electric motor to operate independently of the petrol engine. Thanks to this, the car will revert to an all-electric drive format as often as it can, and you can even force the car to operate in that way by pressing this EV button. The EV function is only available for just over a mile though, and it won't work at all if you exceed 31 miles an hour, or if for some reason the batteries aren't charged up. If that bothers you, and you'd like to be able to go further with silent milk float all electric mobility, then you'll be target market for the pricier Prius plug-in model that I mentioned earlier. As I said, our focus here will remain on the conventional version, which offers a variety of tools for maximizing every drop of petrol. Earlier, I mentioned driving modes activated by this dashboard button. To get anywhere near the quoted figures, you'll need to stay out of the normal and power settings and keep in eco mode. This enhances economy by optimizing power delivery, adjusting throttle response, and tweaking air conditioning performance. Those in a frugal frame of mind will also want to keep an eye on the various graphical screens provided by the Facia's large seven inch Toyota Touch 2 color monitor. There are two, one badged history and the other trip information. The first shows your recent fuel consumption, while the other builds on that with information on your operating range and your average speed. It also shows the amount of braking energy your journeys have regenerated, something that you can optimize by keeping this stubby gear stick in its B setting rather than the D mode that you'd normally select. Another option on the screen is the useful energy monitor, there to show at a glance at any time what's being charged or driven by what. For all your other eco-driving tools, you'll need to shift your gauge up to the smaller, simpler screens that lie a little further up the dash, possibly to the digital speedo, which gives an average fuel consumption reading for each of its two trip settings, but more likely to this simpler multi-information display that lies directly to the left of it. This provides another energy monitor, this time in simpler form, 
but the key option that we'd initially point you to here is the HV system indicator with its useful battery level indicator and driving gauge. The gauge also features as a viewable option on the head-up display that projects key information onto the base of the windscreen if your Prius has been fitted with that feature. However you view it, the basic trick is to keep within the hybrid system indicator's central eco segment as you drive while trying to avoid straying into the red power section at the top of the graph. View this eco driving gauge through the HV system indicator and the display also includes a feature that on each trip will score the efficiency of your driving. Here, judgment is based around three key criteria. Eco start and eco stop rate your smoothness when starting off and coming to a halt, while eco cruise is based around the need for driving without sudden acceleration. Every time you power off, the system will deliver your overall score and offer advice as to how you could in future improve it. If that's not enough to make you feel like you're back at school, then the other options available via the multi-information display probably will. First, there's an eco savings screen that allows you to enter in fuel prices and work out just how much Prius motoring is saving you. Next up is a fuel consumption record that allows you to monitor your frugality frequently, maybe over the last mile or the last five minutes, or infrequently, say over the last month. Plus, there's even an eco diary that shows distance traveled and average fuel consumption, either over the last few days or over the last month. When you sensibly, we found that returns of just over 60 miles to the gallon are perfectly possible. Overall, our take is that with this car, we've been getting between five to 10 miles to the gallon more than we would have done from an eco-branded diesel rival. While of course, using significantly cheaper fuel. When I gave you the efficiency figures at the beginning of this section, I referenced the fact that they depend on your choosing a version with the smaller 15 inch wheels. The 17 inches on a plush derivative like this one um, lower the return significantly to uh, 59.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 104 grams per kilometer of CO2. For an all wheel drive model fitted with 17 inch wheels, a car like the one that we have on test here, the figures are 58.7 miles to the gallon and 108 grams per kilometer. To help you put these stats into some kind of perspective, we'll give you some competitor reference here. A front-driven Prius model's most direct rival, Hyundai's Ioniq Hybrid, manages 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 102 grams per kilometer of WLTP rated CO2. Or to put it another way, that Hyundai is about 10% less efficient than the most frugal version of this Toyota. Which means that this car is going to work out as a very efficient choice, especially for business users concerned about their benefiting kind taxation status. The Prius's BIK rating varies between 21 and 24%, depending on variant chosen. We've crunched the numbers and found that over three years, a 40% taxpayer running a Prius in base active trim would save around a thousand pounds in BIK tax payments over the cost of running a comparable Ford Focus 1.5 EcoBlue diesel. That Focus though is a manual model and this Prius of course only comes as an auto. If remembering that, we pitched this Toyota against more comparable automatic diesel family hatches, the savings would be even greater. The running cost clincher here might come when you start to consider the savings a Prius will deliver for you when it comes to servicing expenditure, thanks to the low maintenance requirements built into the hybrid Synergy Drive system. As part of this, there's no starter motor um, or alternator to go wrong, no drive belts to break, uh, maintenance free timing chain, uh, no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes, and of course, uh, thanks to the CVT Auto gearbox, no clutch either. The hybrid setup has a good record for minimizing tire wear, and its battery will last the life of the car. Plus, the regenerative braking setup helps extend the life of the brake pads. Over 60,000 miles of driving, the front pads should only need replacing once, while the rear pads and all the discs will probably go the full distance of ownership. 
the various prepaid servicing packages you can buy will further help manage costs in this regard. There's a strong environmental argument to make too, given that a Prius emits NOx emissions that are way down on what you'd be smoking out at the wheel of a diesel. Of course, during much of your urban motoring in this Toyota, say when you're inching along in traffic with the engine seamlessly disabled, the EV mode activated and battery power in motion, you won't be emitting any emissions at all. In terms of other things worth knowing, you'll probably already know that owners of conventional hybrid models like this one no longer qualify for free congestion charging or a government grant towards purchase, but you do get a decent five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Though not quite a match for Kia's seven-year deal, this is a notable improvement on the limiting three-year, 60,000-mile packages that you get from brands like Ford, Vauxhall and Volkswagen. It's all just another reason why residual values for this car stack up so well. In fact, independent experts reckon that this Toyota will outperform even premium branded compact hatch diesel rivals. After three years, caps say that a Prius will be worth about 10% more than, say, an Audi A3 Sportback 2.0-litre TDI. What else? Are you worried about the complexity of the hybrid system? Uh, don't be. There are over 8 million Toyota-engineered hybrids reliably pounding global roads, and the facts are that hybrid technology generates fewer warranty claims than conventional petrol or diesel engines do. Anyway, the hybrid system gets its own five-year warranty and users, like taxi operators, will be interested to hear that you can choose to further extend this every year in the first decade of ownership. Anyway, the hybrid system gets its own five-year warranty and users, like taxi operators, will be interested to hear that you can choose to further extend this every year in the first decade of ownership with no limits on total mileage. There's also a 12-year anti-corrosion and perforation warranty and a three-year paintwork and surface rust warranty. Finally, I'll tell you that the insurance groupings for all models are rated at either 13E or 14E, depending on the trim spec that you choose. Toyota's Prius continues to make real-world sense. A car you could justify buying even if you're not trying to make some kind of environmental statement. True, it isn't cheap, but it's decent value for what you get, especially if you compare against comparably specified high efficiency diesel rivals featuring engine technology that by comparison dates back to the arc. With enhanced driving dynamics, a roomier cabin, and more user-friendly design, this fourth-generation version has dealt with many of the drawbacks which used to be part and parcel of Prius ownership. And this lightly revised version has added a bit of welcome extra tinsel to what is now a fundamentally very strong package. As a result, Toyota has created a model that remains difficult to ignore in the gloomy times we live in. Drive this car, then analyze it, and you begin to realize why direct competitors are so thin on the ground. It's not because conventional self-charging hybrid engineering has had its day. No, it's down to the fact that rivals simply don't possess technology quite as advanced as what's on offer here, nor will they have it for the foreseeable future. So what do they have? Eco petrol and diesel engines that, even with mild hybrid tech, continue to smog up the atmosphere with NOx. Plug-in hybrids that are usually too expensive for the average family motorist to afford. And full electric cars that struggle to go more than 200 miles between charges. Arguably, none of these options are really long-term engineering solutions. Better is hydrogen fuel cell technology, but there's quite a high price to pay for it. Anyway, Toyota has market leadership in that area too. For the time being though, we continue to think that the most credible choice for the eco-conscious motorist could well be found right here. The Prius isn't a car for the driving enthusiast and never will be, but if you can accept that, get on with the way it looks and adjust to the frugally focused manner in which it'll want you to drive, 
then we think you might like mostly everything else about it, which isn't something we'd have said about this model's predecessors. A Prius for the people, then. That's about the size of it. Toyota's hybrid revolution continues to gather pace. <laughs>